and welcome to the AFCAS Tenerife Afternoons podcast. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. Today's episode, we have an interview with Jill and David from the Monte Cristo, shedding light on a small bar owner's plight during the lockdown, how to survive and what the future may hold, plus the latest on COVID-19 and the phase two de-escalation and the weather afcast for last week. Enjoy the show and don't forget to subscribe. I publish every Sunday night ready for your Monday morning commute or just to start your week off with a little bit of sun. Talking of sun, here's the weather afcast for Tenerife week ending June 7th, 2020. Full on sunshine last week and a view of La Gomera was clear most days and the temperatures in direct sunlight exceeded 30 degrees C. Temperatures in the shade were in the mid to high 20s, not dropping below 23 at night. We ate every meal outside. A spot of rain on Friday freshened things up with the promise of more to come on the weekend. You'll be able to return to these podcasts next year to find out what the weather was like in a particular week. Great for planning your vacation. COVID-19 update. We've now dropped below 150 active cases in the whole of the Canary Islands. Tenerife has 73 active cases with only six new in the past week, but all those were in the northern part of the island. Tenerife Sur has been COVID-free for the last 10 days in Arona and Santiago de Teide. 19 days in Adeji and over 30 days in the rest of the southwestern municipalities. We've been in de-escalation phase two since May 18th and plan to go to phase three on Monday, June the 8th. More beaches are open again with physical distancing in place. Restaurants and bars inside and outside areas are still accessible at 50% capacity and common sense is prevailing again this week. People seem more relaxed but still on guard. Our pool in the complex has been open since last weekend with physical distancing and booking systems for a time slot, offering a maximum stay of two hours. Other complexes do not have the resources to do everything required, so are staying closed. Spain is still planning to open up for foreign tourists on July the 1st, but there's talk of green corridors between certain European cities and some Spanish resorts like the Balearic Islands in the middle of June. The safety measures are still not yet in place, but they are finalising discussions between tourist ministers and other European countries to try and find a safe way to accept visitors from countries with similar states of de-escalation. Find out next week how Phase 3 works and hopefully what the next steps are going to be. The interview today welcomes some good friends, Jill and David, who run the local watering hole, Monte Cristo, which is debatably the place to be for the local residents of all persuasions with an international clientele. And that's up next. But first, thanks to all our sponsors and especially Matt's for your support. You can join him by buying us a coffee at our website, www.timothydown.com and pressing the sponsor button. If you want me to review a cafe, bar or restaurant, you can also sponsor the visit. Better still, come over in person when it's safe and be part of the show. Without further delay and through the power of the internet, I'll whisk you all back in time to just yesterday and my first in-person interview. I just want to mention the opinions expressed here are our personal ones and not connected with the official tourist industry in any way. Enjoy. Names Jill and David, business owners of Monte Cristo in Cayo Sabaji. Together with their team of bar staff, they've given refuge to the local residents looking for a place to congregate and have a good chinwag. A bubbly welcoming vibe for tourists who have wandered off the beaten track and regular returning visitors alike. We're sat here in the outside space, which is perfectly spread out, and we are complying completely with the social distancing guidelines. So the mic might be a tad too far away, but not to worry. Welcome, Jill and David, to the Afcast Tenerife Afternoons podcast. Hello there. Hello. Oh, you all right? Yeah, we're fine. good. We're thanks. fine. Okay, well, it's, it's a bit early for me for a beer, but you never know. Yeah, right. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Ali, guys, have been keeping all right? Yes, fine. Good, yeah, good to get back. Mm -hmm. Did do you get any problems with the rain the other day? Yeah, more flooded. 
great deal of work over here. Was it? Yeah. Oh dear, oh dear, but at least it's only once or twice a year, isn't it really? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So I've got some questions for you that everybody's really dying to know. Answer them to the best of your abilities and you can do whatever you like. If you don't want to answer anything, that's quite all right by me. Okay, question number one. How did you two meet and what did you do before taking over the bar? We met, um, David used to be a taxi driver, so we met in a taxi and uh, after a few times of getting a taxi, he asked me out for dinner. So. And then the year after that, we got married in Cyprus, and the year after that, we had our son called Raoul. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Very... Were you drunk in the taxi? No, yeah. I wasn't. <laughs> she <laughs> she was. <laughs> and what were you doing before you took over the bar? I used to deliver the beer. I used to work in the lorries. I used to have three lorries. Okay. Living beer and basically soft drinks and anything like that. And that's how I got to know about Monte Cristo. I used to deliver to him. Ah, so you were the inside knowledge before it got public that uh, Michael was going to leave, right? I think so. Cool dude, <laughs> cool dude, well, that's good. Okay, uh, what made you make the leap from what you were doing before to taking over a bar? Well, to be fair, it was just an extra, I mean, I knew the bars always, it was our local anyway, so we knew more or less what it did, and I knew more or less by the amount of delivery, and it was just, to start off, it was just going to be something extra I was going to do. It just ended up being my main job now. Sold the lorry, so ended up doing just this. So you full-time Monte Cristo. Uh, what do I call you? Do I call you owners? Do I call you? Uh, what's the what's the actual word here? Uh, okay. Business owner, yeah. Yeah, it's business owner. Monte yeah. Cristo business owners. Yeah. Okay. Big question. How prepared were you for the effects of the lockdown? Uh, not at all. Didn't I? We were, lucky. The next. we were lucky, we had some savings and that, and so we could get through it, but nobody's prepared for it, were they? No. I mean, is that the biggest thing? You've got to have a little bit of cash behind you? Oh. To be quite honest, we've had no help for any, any sort of government, um, landlord, anybody. We've had no help whatsoever. So you, you were left on your own, we're basically? We're getting a little trickle from the government now, but we're still, I'm still having to pay out more than I'm getting in, so. We were, we were lucky in the sense that we, we, we had a little bit of saving, so that got us through. Mm -hmm. Cool, well. But it would have went on much longer. Our we were, we were not living, but it's sort of getting back to normal now. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Are you, we're on phase two now, so that's like 50%, right? Yeah, well, phase three starts Monday, so, yeah. so you can go up to 75%. 75% yeah. You can go to the other bar and that, so okay. more or less. It's a more relaxed. Mm -hmm. The police uh -huh. seem to be turning a bit of a blind eye to it. I suppose they have to really. Mm -hmm. The new business to be working, otherwise they're not going to get any money out of so. Exactly, exactly. So having savings is quite important for you guys. So do you think that all of your fellow bar owners on the island will survive as you have? We're lucky that we, i say about at least 80% of our, our residents, locals, live here, retire here, whatever. The ones, the, the bars in Las Americas and that, they've been large and tourism. And they have a so we've done and, flights and the to come in. And the rents are a lot more expensive and, mm -hmm. you know, so for them it will be more difficult, I think. Oh we're, we're lucky in that sense, I think, but... Uh, it's a small village and everybody knows and it's all locals that lives here, so... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We thought, of course, we... are more like... Our, our customers are like friends, really, aren't they? Yeah. More, than, more than customers, aren't they? So, you know, they supported us, so thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you, you could envisage that there are other bars that are not in the same position as you and no. probably won't be able to open again. I mean, I, I know lots of the bars down in restaurants as well, down in Las Americas and... It was like outrageous rents that they have to pay. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, that's not good news, but I'm glad that uh, you've uh, organised yourselves. Yeah. We've got a little bit of building work going on in the background, but don't worry, that's the life and sounds of Tenerife. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, how do you envisage the road back to some sort of normality? Uh, I, don't know. I don't think we'll see any notable tourists until next year, summer next year. A little few of the Germans and that will come back. In the winter we'll have the, the, the usual ones that have got properties here, and, you know, the winter homes and the, the swallows. But real, real tourism you'll notice until, I don't reckon it'll be any until next summer, to be honest. So I know a lot of people on the forums and on Facebook and that are chomping at the bit to come back. So um, what do you think about those people? Do you think they're, they're living in, in a fantasy? Or? Some are afraid also. You've got the other side. I mean, this, these, these hotels, I mean, they're big hotels. 
and the way the governments, what do they do? Do they open up and bring people on board, and then they can't take them off the of the uh, set onto social again? So they they stuff us what to do. So it's, yeah, it's gonna be hard, and unless you've got a good book in there that you can afford to do it, then how are you gonna do it? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, on another note, what advice, if any, would you give to somebody who wants to move over here and open a bar? To come and research where, where you're going to open bar. Very, very, very good research first. Where you're going to open the area, what you're going to aim for, what market you're aiming for. It's a lot of competition too, yeah. of course. So you, you could, you've got to look into it very well. So do your homework first, basically. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and don't. Because, I mean, do you need any sort of experience, do you think, before you open the bar? Do you need Spanish? Do you need law? Uh, you, can, you can get by without the Spanish. It'll cost you a little bit more money, because obviously you're going to have the people doing things for you, but you can get by without it. We're, We're lucky, special. obviously, David's a Canarian, so he knows the rules and regulations. You just don't come and take a bar from one day to the next. Yeah, you take a bar, oh, you don't know what, if there's any debts or anything mm -hmm. like that. You don't know the laws. And you it's a lot of research you have to do to before you... Get caught out very easy. So basically just coming over and looking on the internet and saying bar yeah. for 50 grand, then no. you're going to be... Have a good solicitor yeah? you to, do, to make sure you look into it. Okay, good and good. do your homework yeah. first. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you are Canarian, I believe, but you don't sound Canarian. Why is that? I lived in England for about 16 years. Oh, right. Okay. That's it. Whereabouts? In Surrey, mostly. Surrey, yeah. Very posh, very posh. Yeah, yeah. And you not sound English either? I'm Irish, from Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Kind of Fermanagh. Fermanagh? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So you're international people here and international guests also. Yeah. You see, yeah, you yeah, get a lot of international sorts. guests, right? Mostly English, but... Danish, Germans, Austrians, I don't know, Italians, mm. South Americans. Nah, we're, 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 no, we're not South Americans, do we? No. We get Danish in the winter, we get a lot of Danish. A lot of Danish in the winter. Mostly English, 70%. Some Germans. Mm. Well, one Austrian, you know them. I do. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but it's a wonderful life also, you know, obviously. You have the weather and you have the outside, 90% of your time, the beaches and walks and... It's a wonderful life. And what about the very, kids? Very relaxed, what laid back. Kids? Good. Yeah, wonderful life for children too. They can do whatever they want. They're not tied down to the weather or anything, are they? That's they true. Start and, and the schooling? Quite happy with that? Very happy, yeah. Very good. And of course, they speak the two languages, English and Spanish, so that's a bonus even on its own. Yeah, our daughter was born in Germany and was brought yeah. up in America, so she's like fluent in both. But of course. Ne never the twain shall meet because she always still finds it hard to translate between the two. Yeah. She just thinks in both languages, okay. but just doesn't mix the two together. So she has. Oh, well, we're different. Like me and Raul, we'll have a conversation half in English, half in Spanish. Oh, I've done that before. Yeah. I've done that before. Yeah. In the same yeah. sentence, right? Yeah. I mean, it might come to you the word first in English, and you say in English if you're speaking Spanish yeah. or vice versa. Yeah. Ser Alador. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're nearly at the end now, but I was just wondering, do you have any future plans that you can share with us? Any expansions, or are you keeping anything under your hat that you're not going to tell us? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. So you, your plan for the next 12 months is just keep your head above water, get the thing exactly. back to where it was? Just get it back up running okay. properly. And get our savings we'll back see. in the bank. Get your savings back in the bank, yeah. And we'll see. I noticed you used to do like these um, events like um, Cheltenham Week and stuff like that. And oh, well, yeah, events. well, I mean, once it goes back to normal, we'll plan to do them again. Yeah, yeah and charity, lots of charity you do as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, we did, yeah. so we plan to do at least a couple of them a year. Okay. So. And you're a rabbit, right? A golfer? Rabbit, yellow shirt, lovely undies, all of it. All oh, right. So, <laughs> Johnny, you're coming on a bar here, or you need some good staff, and you can go and play golf all the yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Talking about staff, um, I know most of them. You kept all of them on, didn't you? Kept them all. I mean, yeah. at the moment, sort of two of them we got back, but obviously, at the end of the month, we'll have the other ones back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, we're at the end of my questions. Is there anything you want to tell us, or is there? Any, do you want to say hi to anybody? Uh, really, just thank the customers, don't we? Mm -hmm, thank for their support. And carrying on. Thank for them. We're, it's we're been hard out, also on our feet with for them. David having to turn some regulars away because you yeah. had the capacity of... So you sorry, sorry to the ones that we've turned away because we've been too, too, we too busy. To, we've had to, we've had to look after ourselves, you know. If okay. we've got a fine, that would have been 
unbelievable. That would so have been unbelievable. It's, we had to look after our own interests too, but thank God they're all coming back slowly and it's beginning to even itself out a bit. So from next week it should even be more which capacity, which is good. It'll leave everybody more relaxed. It will. It will. Well, thank you, Jill and Davey, for the insight into the workings of the local bar Monte Cristo, which you'll be found taking the steps up from the Hipadino supermarket here in Kyoslovakia. If you come in from outside the village, you can get a taxi or get the bus line 473. Drink responsibly and keep safe. It's time to open up now, so let's get to it. Mine's a large Dorada. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. I went on to have a second beer and then things became a blur. Don't forget the Monte Cristo is welcoming everyone. Just take the steps up the side of the Hipodino in Kyosavaki and follow the sound of fun. Next week, I have an interview set up with Tenerife's own galloping gourmet restaurateur, radio personality, tourist travel expert and golfer extraordinaire with the rabbits, Mr. Peter Quilty. Don't miss that. Thanks for tuning in. I publish every Sunday night, so subscribe to be notified. We have a Facebook page called Living With MS in Tenerife and can be reached by searching for at LWMST. Plus we have a YouTube channel at youtube.com slash LWMST and the new videos every Tuesday. And a website at www.timothydowd.com where you can send me an email or sponsor the show. Until next week, stay safe and goodbye. Thank you.